how do I get Tastes into like smoking and grilling? I think I'm being set up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're talking about Charles's form of broccoli. He, oh, loves, okay. just, he loves smoking broccoli on the grill. Oh, are we talking about that? I was going to sit back like, all right, Kurt, it's all yours, man. Let's yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So the first thing you need to do is decide whether or not you actually want to do it. All right. <laughs> so let's say you got past that and you do. Um, what I would do is what I did, and that is – Start with your regular grill. Don't worry about getting a smoker. Don't worry about anything like that because you need to understand how things work first. So if you have a regular grill, get yourself. What's a regular grill? So so uh, whether propane or gas or charcoal, it, can, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable with and and what is going to be most important is being able to control the temperature. So if you have a grill, you can control the temperature and you actually have a thermometer on your grill that is good because most of them are terrible. What's good? So one that is calibrated to be accurate. And what I mean by that is what people do is they will either they'll, they'll buy like those oven thermometers that you can buy with the stick coming out of them. Um, and put it in your, either put it in boiling water, which we know is 210 degrees Fahrenheit, or put it in your oven, set your oven to a, a temperature. And if you know your oven is accurate, you can compare it against what the, what the thermometer says. So now you have your point of reference. The ones that are built into the hood of most grills, the big dial ones are usually terrible, like, and can be off in temperature by 50 to 100 degrees at times <laughs> whoa that's like say my car goes 400 miles on a tank of gas if it does or maybe sometimes 50 miles yep what yep <laughs> yep that's why that's why they're terrible so real quick before you go on you sir fit guy day make me feel fat is, you need to have a link on there that links all your favorite tools for what you do on Amazon, like here's a few thermometers that I like. Affiliate here's links. A few, yeah, and let the yeah. All right. Yeah. So I, I've I've purposefully stayed away from affiliate links, but I'm but I'm I'm kind of coming around to the idea of maybe doing with that. Amazon or something so, like this because like yeah. it would make it. You're saying instead of me going, what's good? You're like, yeah, you know what? I enough. got a few on my link shop. Go check out what you. Yep. Want. I don't know what's good. That's why I keep asking. Okay, right. What's normal? What's good? So right. So so um so there's that. Now. Let's say you want to smoke something. Um, I would suggest something uh, forgiving, like chicken. Okay. Like get now, smoking smoke. is different than grilling. We're not firing it up. Correct. If you think that, like, this is oversimplifying, but grilling direct heat, smoking offset heat, just to kind of put it out there, um, because we also haven't talked about wood chips or wood pellets or anything like that but we'll get there um the first thing is really the the whole process which is if you're doing chicken you put your chicken on one side of the grill and usually if you have multiple burners on on uh your grill you want to take you want to light the burner that is the furthest away from where the chicken's going to be and that'll be offset heating offset cooking um, and you are probably going to want to keep it really low because you don't want the internal temperature to be higher than about 225 to 250. So that's, that's the kind of setup. Now, how do we infuse it with smoke? The easiest way is, well, there's two, there's two ways. One, one I haven't tried nowadays uh, Kingsford and those kinds of companies are putting out smoking pouches, which I guess you just put them in and you light them and they generate smoke. Okay, cool. I've not tried that. Okay. Um, there's also smoking tubes, which are a mesh tube that's usually six to 12 inches long and you fill it with pellets, like wood pellets that you can buy at any of the hardware stores. 
usually flavored like apple or hickory or mesquite, that kind of thing. And you put you light them and let them smolder. Once they generate a good amount of smoke, uh, smoke, yeah, you, you put the cover down on the grill and you let that thing go. And you let it go for probably a couple of hours. Uh, for the chicken, you got to get your chicken to 165 degrees. And that's the other piece of equipment that I would recommend. And that is a instant read thermometer. Uh, Thermapen uh, is one of the companies that, that makes a good one. Um, and you you check it, 165 degrees. And when it's done, you pull it. You just pull it. Um but it's going to take a lot of practice. Um, I decided to go with ribs first. And I didn't have good edible ribs for the first two or three times. Mm. In fact, one of them caught on fire in my grill. Ooh. Flames shooting out <laughs> flames shooting out the back of the grill. And I pulled out four racks of charcoal. Oh no! And it's not even supposed to be hot enough to catch on fire, right? Nope. Because you're talking about hours of letting it sit there in offset heat yep. versus cooking over a matter of minute, thirty right. minutes, sixty minutes, that kind of thing. Yeah, when my when I do my ribs, it's usually a six or seven hour process. And they caught on fire. <laughs> I was like, that's just funny. Yep. That's just, so. Oh my god! Uh, that was so, a Cracker Barrel night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Uh, so, but, but I would say, I would, I would really say start simple, start small, start simple. Uh, a good thing to do, a good way to, to play around with it a little bit. If you like cheese, smoke your own cheese. And that just sounded like an insult. Go smoke it, your no, own cheese. No. <laughs> and so one of the things about cheese is it, it's what is called cold smoke. And cold smoke just refers to anything under 180 degrees. However, if you're in a climate that is pretty cool in the springtime, you get one of those smoking pellet tubes that I'm talking that I was talking about, or a pouch. You light it, you put it into your grill. You do not turn on your grill. You lay out your your cheese and let it go for two hours. Just let it smolder, let it smoke the cheese for two hours. Take it out. Find a way to kind of vacuum pack your cheese, whether it's through sucking all the air out of a Ziploc or or getting a vacuum sealer. Yeah. You, 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 you seal it up, throw it in the back of your fridge for two weeks, minimum, and you let it sit there. Because what? You- okay, what is it about hot than cold that that brings out flavors? So so what for the smoke end of things? Um, smoke will attach itself to meat more when the meat is colder. Interesting. Hmm. And then it mellows out after it, uh, while it's doing the cooking. With cheese, there is no cooking. You're literally just producing smoke to attach itself to the cheese. You put it away for a couple of weeks to mellow it out. Because if you try eating the smoked cheese right away, it's acrid as all get out and okay. it's not good. I did a before and after try because you have to. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, but smoked cheddar is great. Smoked gouda is That's great. That's my favorite. Smoked yeah, gouda. I did yeah. smoked mozzarella as well. Um, I did smoke smoked mozzarella via. I just bought some cheese sticks, and I smoked okay. those. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's it's really good. Doesn't take very long. I need to do more of it. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, but yeah. So does that kind of answer the beginning smoking question? Yeah, so let's <laughs> let's do a, a simple simple man's recap. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, correct me where I'm wrong here, but the easiest thing it sounds like to do is to get you. You have to have a good meat thermometer or yep. you know, whatever. Yep. Uh, you have to have a, a smoking tube or smoking pouch. And then a, a grill that you can cover that you want to get up to a certain temperature, and then just play with stuff like chicken and and timing. And I'm assuming YouTube and and Google are your best friends. Oh yes, case. YouTube, unbelievable amount of videos with people who know what they're talking about, like at a high level. Good. I, yeah, I've been I've been experimenting with making my own gummies, and the first recipe I found basically was Jello, 
and that's okay. But that's not what I wanted. And right. so I've got the, the recipe down for the texture and the flavor. Now, when I'm talking about making my own gummies, I get the Knox unflavored gelatin. Yep. Uh, now I use some other stuff. Yeah, we can go into that on another show. But uh, the flavoring, I'm a huge fan of Kool-Aid. And so I just took two packs of the same flavor of Kool-Aid and put it in this recipe and, and to make my own flavor. And it, it, I mean, it came out like a Kool-Aid gummy, and I really enjoyed that part. So there's other stuff that I, I'll be playing with there. But I got that from going to YouTube and going, okay, how to make the best gummy bears? Because I, I wanted to replicate that. So I'm assuming, as you just said, yes, that there's a lot of – you want – somebody like me you'd want something simple give me a, a step-by-step breakdown on how to smoke some gouda and then practice from there so i, I like it now right. random kid does ask you do you have a good jerk chicken recipe i do not but there are so many out there um and uh just honestly jerk chicken from a seasoning standpoint just isn't my favorite flavor and so i don't i don't do it a whole heck of a lot but there's pre-made uh pre-made seasonings out there there's uh recipes upon recipes upon recipes of people making their own seasoning when i do a barbecue rub i make my own based on recipes that i found and i add my own little things to it because that's what you do kind of like chili you, you you get a base recipe and you just add whatever you do out over the years yeah um so i you know i i think that um yeah, I I I've gotten to the point where I I I do ribs and I actually wrote out a whole set of instructions for for friends of mine. Um if you are thinking about just buying a smoker, my suggestion would be go pellet smoker. Uh, because pellet smokers are usually digitally controlled, you can set the temperature, the pellets are available just about everywhere nowadays. And it's a good entry into it, and the chances of mistakes are far less. So I like it. Uh, Grant, give me stuff. Charles drank his own Kool Aid. No, I ate my own Kool Aid. There, there's a difference. Oh yeah, uh, but it's, now self confidence makes sense. <laughs> And one last question on this, because I think it's a val- very valid question, and I've got a thought on it, but I want to hear what Kurt has to say. Dry or wet ribs? Now, explain what that is to the layperson. Yeah, so so it, it's simply um, wet ribs have sauce. They're just sauced. And dry ru- dry ribs um, rely on the on the dry rub to give it its flavoring um, on, on the, the ribs themselves. I... I put a little sauce on my ribs, but I prefer the ribs that don't need that. So what I do is you'll see, like if you go out and buy ribs, they're usually drowning in sauce. Yeah. And and it's just yeah. it, it's unnecessary. I I use a dry rub and then I at the, at the very end, I will put a small layer of sweet baby rays. That's really all I use. And small yeah. layer of of sauce, let it set and get sticky, and that's it. I don't I don't lather it on. I I barely put any on just to give it a little. Extra. And the thing you, 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 I personally think you don't need to. I'm a dry uh, yeah. rib kind of. Now I will add some sauce on the side for specific flavor. Like a, I like. Um, uh, I could have told you. Try trying to tell you. It's a cowboy sauce that comes in a glass shaped or it's a glass bottle shaped like a whiskey bottle. So and so made a barbecue sauce i forget the name of the person right now yeah. I'm, I'm tired but i, I like their flavors mm-hmm. so i'll have a little bit on the side but the thing is you do a good enough dry rub and then let it sit in something that keeps the moisture in it turns into a sauce rub or a sauce thing by itself kind with of the meat does. juices yeah that's the best sauce to me uh did did we have pulled pork barbecue when you're here for the cookout no i was going to make it and and we kind of ran out yeah, of you're time gonna do something and, else. Uh, yeah. 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 Sometimes I'm a run law dude, but here's the thing: he does this straight dry rub, pull pork. But by the time it sits and marinates, it's just the juiciest, your know, flavor. Yeah, pork. I believe it. Uh, and one more, one more from kid uh, again. Hey, come out live on Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern. Two question mark uh, <laughs> on Twitch.tv slash wise underscore underscore nerdy. Ask your own questions because these are good questions. Do you marinate your meat before you smoke them? Nope. Not necessary. I, I mean, I well, I will uh, let me let me clarify. I don't marinate my ribs. 
Um, I will marinate chicken on occasion, and, but I but I do uh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts a lot right now. Um, but breasts or thighs, particularly if they have no skin, I will marinate them usually in a teriyaki or a barbecue or sometimes like I'll, I, sometimes I'll marinate them in Frank's Red Hot uh, just for some buffalo chicken type type of flavor. But have you tried Cholula? I love Cholula. Cholula, but I love it as a condiment. Me like too, I, 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 I don't, I don't, and whatnot, you know? yeah, I wouldn't use it as a marinade just because the bottles are too small, <laughs> but, but yeah, get, all right, yeah, yeah, well, that's a lot. How, are you talking about you go and get like the half gallon to gallon size of Frank's when you do a marinade? Uh, no, but I get the giant two pack of uh, the larger bottles that you can get at Costco, okay, that's yep. crazy. All right, so, Joe, <laughs> you, you brought the topic up. Do you have any questions? Well, he laughed, so <laughs> you don't have any questions. No questions. Uh, do you have any thoughts on it? Do you have any? Uh, uh, I have the exact grill that he said not to get. <laughs> uh and yeah i i completely ignore the temperature gauge on on that i haven't i haven't actually tried smoking but i do grill out back every now and again and we actually got a my in-laws gave us a fire pit for christmas and so we've gone out and uh cooked out there but mostly it's it's been like hot dogs cooking over the fire for the the kids yeah, you know yeah, but yeah, it it's yeah. it's not like a fine dining experience it's more a, a memory building experience oh we we went out back and we cooked and we had fun and it actually sure. makes me think of my childhood because there was a summer where basically every friday night we built a fire in the backyard and and either made tinfoil dinners or hot dogs or you know whatever and so that there was a summer where every friday that's what we did and it was fun yeah 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 it, we do s'mores and different things i i had a very nice grill at one point that just got ruined because it didn't get used because i i just it turns out a very expensive lesson was i'm not a grilling kind of guy i don't i don't care i will absolutely you know work on some gastronomy in the kitchen and see what i can mix with like like the gummy bears where it's like uh, next we're gonna do like country time pink lemonade you know you'll play with that kind of thing but i absolutely just do not care to sit out there and and do the barbecue and, and the cooking the things but i'll eat it all day and appreciate it all day long uh a random kid it would be amazing if you were the person says that I can make this happen. But I love a random kid says we need a lot of wise and nerdy branded products: gummies, cigars, scotch, dice, uh, maybe Papa Kurtz, you know, butt rub. Uh, you know, <laughs> those guys. We can have all kind of <laughs> wise and nerdy branded goodness here. Is all I'm saying. Um, so I do have a question for another time. Yeah, people are going to misconstrue that all over the place and marinate their yep. bottoms. Yep. <laughs> it, it's the best. Uh, there's a hot sauce out there called poop to bed. And yeah. Oh, I bought, I bought a, a hot sauce once called Dr. Sphincter's. Uh, colon cleanser no but it was it was like <laughs> it was like like pucker butt or something yeah. it was just it was like one of those hot sauces where you take a, a a bit like on a on the end of a toothpick and you taste it and it just lights up your mouth yeah um but i would use a few drops of it whenever i would make chili because it's got an applesauce base for the hot okay. sauce so it adds a little sweetness mm. as well as the heat yeah. Um, but man, you couldn't eat that like with any amount. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, uh, it, I mean, it's months and months away. We'll forget, but if we remember when you guys are here for the the after party Dragon Con, I've got this bottle of Komodo uh black, and Komodo's the name of the brand. It's a local guy. His grandma was Taiwanese, raising with all kinds of Thai chilies and stuff. And so he's made his own line of sauce with gold, red, and black. And it's K-O-M-O-D-O. -O -O. You can get on the website and find it. Uh, but I love it. But it's the same thing. It's a soy-based hot sauce with a lot of Thai flavoring. So it gets chunky as, as the sauce runs out. And you have to shake it up. And 
and and and but you can only use so much because it gets overwhelming but when you use the right amount it, it just really brings yeah. a special flavor and, and that's a, that i don't really that's why i call it gastronomy i don't really cook i take hey i got a great i, I make shelby's chili right i don't do it from scratch and like oh, cool i like the shelby's mix whatever boom shelby's then I add a little fresh jalapeno a little fresh onion a little uh, of the komodo sauce and yeah. that's why they just kind of mix chemistry together to see how i can really bring it up that's about it uh, but now that Kurt's back, sorry, Joe I, did I, say that's okay. I, yeah, go ahead. Joe, Joe did say he has the exact girl you said not to get, but that was <laughs> about it. Oh, yeah, I don't think he had many questions. He has what? the one with the, the grades on the front. That no, and no, I look, I think most of us have had one, Mine, mine's or, pretty cheap. Yeah, uh, well, but though, the, the so even, grill. even in higher end, I mean, unless you're paying over a thousand dollars for your grill, chances are that that uh thermometer is terrible they look just, yeah next time i go to his house i will take a picture and show it's just a sticker it's not even a game <laughs> it doesn't work it's just <laughs> a sticker. 